Hello everybody, my name is Gothic Lord UK. Welcome to the 1.0 release of Pyrene. I played the demo of this previously, had a great time with it, and then I asked the publisher for a key to play the game. They sent me one, so thank you ever so much to them. If you want to check out the game for yourself, as ever, the links will be down in the description. The game releases on September 13th. Let's jump into the action. New game. Select a language. English will be wonderful for me. Thank you ever so much. Left-handed archer. That is a geological event you probably don't want happening day to day. Atania. Village. I have to get back to the village. You can move around using WASD keys, the arrow keys, or your mouse. Move to the healing potion to restore your strength. So we can move on all the cardinal directions. That's better. Now you need to find your way back to the village. The map shows the zones you must travel through to reach the village. You're in the red zone. The arrow on the right indicates the exit to the next zone. So there's the mini map, start zone, danger zone, wheat fields. Let's go to the danger zone. You've entered a danger zone. Your goal is to find the votive altar to clear the zone. To do this, move from card to card. However, once you've made a move, you won't be able to retrace your steps. You can mouse over the cards in play to see their effects. So, Single Bow deals 2 damage to the enemy with the most HP. Acker Belts deals 2 damage. Goblin deals 2 damage. Drac deals 3 damage. Gizotso deals 2 damage. Healing Potion, Medicinal Herbs, heals 2, removes negative statuses. So, we do 2 damage there. We have 10, they have 2. So, we take 2 from them. When you move on an enemy, a confrontation is automatically triggered. You inflict as much damage on each other as you have HP. HP is indicated on the card and on your enemy's cards. You killed this enemy because you had more HP than it did, but it still dealt damage to you. If your HP drops to zero, you fail the expedition. When you kill an enemy, it leaves behind a loot card. The more powerful the enemy, the better the loot. So, we take the coin. So, there is seven damage on the board right now. We can kill everything, but we can't go to every step because of the route that we would have to take to do so. To discover the Vault of Altar, you'll need to spend the night. This will allow you to draw cards to empty spaces and fill... Draw new cards to fill the empty spaces. However, spending the night requires you to consume two provisions. Your provisions are visible here. If you don't have enough, you will receive one damage per missing provision. However, be careful. Enemies gain one max HP during the night. Make sure you kill as many as you can during the day. To spend the night, click on this button or press the spacebar. All right, we'll leave the donkey. We'll take five healing. Now we can't move to the spaces we've been to. In danger zones, you can't move on empty spaces. It is therefore impossible to retrace your steps. Make sure to plan your moves accordingly. All right, we'll spend the night then. There's the votive altar. Pray to this altar to clear the current danger in the zone. What are these guys doing? Resurrection. After death, returns to life immediately. Right, so seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, five. We can do the whole lot, I believe. One and one, gold and five and two and two and pray. Congratulations, you reached the votive altar. 
The votive altar clears the zone and restores your HP and provisions. Once a zone is cleared, you can move around freely. All right, so we can go to the wheat fields. Back to the village completed. Barn. In the barn, take a look at the details of your latest expedition. The barn is empty. All right, we can go down here. Mum! Eki, be praised. Here you are. I thought I'd lost you. Are you hurt? Did those creatures attack you? And are the others? Where are they? Calm down, calm down, I'm fine. We managed to escape before the monsters got to the village. But we're not safe here anymore, with everything burnt down and no wood to rebuild our defences. I can take care of the wood. I think I know where to find some. I'll get you some quickly, don't worry. Wood for Matilda. So we've got markets, forges, taverns, all destroyed, needing wood. At the tavern, choose who's going on the expedition. Add three wood to rebuild the tavern. The cartography workshop, the sanctuary, the temple of Urge, the market square, the forge, and the warehouse. All right, we got some work ahead of us then. Take relics with you to make your expeditions easier. Add six wood to rebuild the watchtower. Out to the grasslands then. Your equipment cards will be drawn in the next danger zones. This is because danger zone cards are a mix of equipment cards and enemy cards. To see your deck, click this button. This is your deck of equipment cards. Your cards will appear in this order in the danger zones. You can reorder them if you wish. Note that your endurance is at five, so only your first five cards will be drawn in the next danger zones. So, single bow, hunting knife, health potion, medicinal herb, apple, and a blueberry. Gives you one provision and one spirit. Don't know that we have any use for spirits right now. Spirits. Resource to use your special powers during an expedition. Yeah, we don't have that yet. I think we can move the apple up slightly. Well, now I'm just being really overly precious. We're at five of five provisions, so we don't need the apple until we've actually slept. So maybe we will stick with how it just was. Lateral shots deals four damage to all enemies in the same row and column as you. Costs eight spirits. Interesting. All right, let's progress. Um, the bow can kill the donkey. We can kill the resin skeleton. Medicinal herb, medicinal herb. What is this? Just a unicorn. Just a very unpleasant looking unicorn. Right, I don't need the hunting knife right now, so let's rest. Then we can take the hunting knife. Is that just three damage to a thing? Does one damage to a random enemy in play triggered three times? Oh. Wonderful. Wood, apple, coins, herb, coins. Rest again. Spirit. Votive shield. Huh? Votive shard. Gives plus one to the votive altar in play. When the votive altar is in play, enemy loot will always be votive shards. Votive shards. Okay. So this is at four now. Can I rest again? So we can make a giant altar. Uh, with five health, we can afford to do this. But then... We definitely can't afford to rest again, but we get to nine up here. Holy Feather gives plus one endurance permanently. Okay. And then the equipment chest. Open the chest and choose a reward. The higher the value of this card, the better the chances of uncovering rare equipment. 
Umbo. Inflation gives you one shield rare. Inflation gains plus one when you spend the night. Interesting. Sword deals one damage to all enemies in play. Golden Staff, legendary, changes one random non-boss enemy in play into gold coins of the same value. I mean, yeah, I'll take the, the legendary. You got a new card. It has been added to your deck after your active cards. If you want to use it in the next danger zone, remember to reorganize your deck. All right, so we could probably take out the blueberry. And we'll put this earlier. We'll do something like that, I think. All right, so south was the start zone. We need to go north to the exit, I suppose. We did get some wood, didn't we? A corrupted altar. An eerie glow comes from this altar. All right, it's a trap. This guy's got shield. Deals two damage, one shield. Shield protects HP against all types of non-piercing damage. Resurrection. After death, immediately returns to life. Incandescent. Inflicts burn to its enemies. The value of burn is equal to the amount of damage inflicted. Now, here's the interesting thing about this room. We can't go back on ourselves. So once we pass this plant, we can't go back to one area. So we'd have to either do a very large loop, or if we commit to going here before taking everything, we have to rest before we can get back across. That seems important. What is this? Scratch. Inflicts bleed to its enemy. The value of bleed is equal to the amount of damage. Bleed take extra damage on receiving damage. That seems unpleasant. I don't want to take the health potion first. But if we want to clear the zone, we have to, basically. It's the only way we can do the full path. Alright, let's start here. Now, this will either kill the bleeder or the other guy. They have the same HP, but one has shield, so I don't know if that impacts its decision. Fine. We rest. Um, I think I'm just going to go up to the knife. Then we have to rest again. Okay, Voltive Altar is here. If we go past the gold coins to the southeast, we have to rest again before we can get to the altar. And that seems unideal. So let's just take this top path. We won't have such a giant altar, but that's fine. Right. We got gold coins. Can I not go through here? Last card. This card becomes accessible when it is the only card in play. Okay. Holy Apple. Gives plus one max provision permanently. So we're at five. This gets us to six. And a chest. Healing Ring. Spirit cards also heal your HP. Oak Bark. Gives plus two to wood cards. Broken Skull gives minus 1 HP to all enemies. Enemies can never have less than 1 HP. I mean, as much as I want wood to get us going on our adventure back in town, this just seems unbelievably good, right? You got a relic. Relics give a passive effect for your current expedition. Click your profile to see your relics. Note that the cards and relics you get are only kept for the current expedition. So... There's our broken skull. There's our cards. We don't know what this is yet. Okie dokie. Would you like to go to the next biome? You won't be able to come back here. Yep, there's nothing left for us in that biome, I believe. Get a fresh new tune on the piano. But we're here. There's a merchant up ahead. Milaris. 
Won't tell you my age, but I can say I wouldn't be near as spry if I'd never taken up time to toughen up. Um, gives plus one to your max provisions. Gives plus one to your endurance. Gives plus one to your health. Click and upgrade to buy it. We have 17 gold. So we can just pick one of these. Give me provisions. God, that gets real expensive, doesn't it? But I guess, yeah, we can come back if we get more money later. Then we're moving to an anvil. Anvil gives plus one to the selected card. Costs eight to upgrade. We have eight. Plus one. Changes one non-boss enemy in play to gold coins. Changes two random non-boss enemies. That's unbelievably good. Some environments, such as the Dark Forest, have special rules. They are indicated by this icon. In the forest, a firefly flies over the cards, following your movements symmetrically. By clicking this power, you can swap positions with the firefly. Be careful though, the power costs one spirit per use. Interesting. Um, well, what does Corrupted do? Gives you two wood, gives plus one max HP to all enemies in play. Okay, so we gold staff the two enemies immediately out of existence. And then we leave the good equipment. God, the enemies are far away, aren't they? is this toxicity inflicts poison takes one damage after each of your moves decreases by one that's fine so we go 14 down to 13 it goes away classic atiana's special power is now ready to use this power inflicts damage on enemies in play you can use it at any time however you need to spend eight spirits to use it Piercing. All damage inflicted by this ignores any shield. Okay. Uh, we can go up, left, down. Left. Now, we could rest again. Make a bigger altar. We have the provisions. Twelve health. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. I think we can make the lap. But they attack us because of their movement. If you've played Forward Escape the Fold, you'll be very familiar with that. Of course, this game comes from the developers of uh, Forward Escape the Fold. Gives you plus one max HP permanently. Oh, you can click to zip around. Very nice. Open the chest and choose a reward. Choose a relic. Wood scroll. Wood cards spend the night for free. You can only own one copy of this relic. Wood cards spend the night for free. I don't know what that means. Spend the night. Allows you to draw new cards Gives plus one max HP to enemies in play. If you take, if you're short on provisions, you will take piercing damage. Using a power also gives you four shield. Broken skull. Give minus one HP to all enemies. Again? I mean, absolutely. So all enemies have minus two max HP, and obviously they can't go under one, but they can start at one, and that would be great. Who are you? Na Azalias. Travels the region in search of stories to tell. She can seem to express herself in any other way other than singing. Purchase one or more relics for gold. I only have five. All right, well, we shan't worry too much about stuff I can't afford. Um... We can do the whole place. 
That's going to increase health, but that's going to get rid of the enemies anyway. I don't need to use the single bow, though, so space for one provision. Then bow. I'm good for health, so we'll leave the health potion. Yes, I'm going to clear more tiles because we want to make sure the altar appears. We don't want to be stuck farming small refreshes, not getting to the altar, and then being stuck. Right, we'll do the lap the other way. No food. We can rest for 5 HP because it will come back. And then if we hate what we see, we can just not. I'll take the gold. Alright, that'll do. Holy Feathers are Endurance. And an Equipment Chest will be added to your deck. Fibula has a 1 in 20 chance of permanently giving Echo to a card in play from your deck. Echo, the card's effect is triggered once more. Golden Shield spends up to 8 gold and gives you as much shield. Scythe defeats one random non-boss enemy in play. Has a 1 in 20 chance of permanently giving echo to a card in play from your deck permanently all right so we probably want that up front right to use it immediately with 12 gold we cannot afford to use the anvil again unfortunately and this room looks like a boss room End of the expedition. Alright then. Defeat the boss. You just reached the final zone in this expedition. This zone features a boss that must be defeated if you want to win your expedition. There is also no Voltive Altar in this zone. Your only objective is to defeat the boss. Notice the rain. Weather effects can change the classic rules of the game. Mouse over this icon to find out more. When a status is applied, double its value. Okay, so that's like burn, bleeding, all that stuff. Duly noted. Let's start. Yeah. So this apple has echo to give us six provisions now. Amazing that we got the first one in 20 chance. Uh, reincarnation returns to life indefinitely with 2 HP less. Alright, well, I would like the wood. Dark votive altar. Pray to this to clear the zone, okay? Well, if the run's over, we don't need to make ourselves stronger, right? Zoe, a little ermine who has forged a strong bond with Ekahan. Her instincts are never wrong. Zoe, I'm so glad to see you. Everything is alright? Cree, cree, cree. I agree. This monolith is really weird. Let's not go near it. It could be dangerous. Zoe, no. Zoe went to the monolith. She, she disappeared? Well, first of all, got wood. A strange monolith that lights up when you approach it. Victory! You bring back 11 wood to the village. Back to the main menu, back to the village, view statistics. Alright. 52 enemies, 41 attacks, da da da. Health lost, health da 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 da. Lots of numbers, love the numbers. 
All right, so back to the village. But it's our barn. I'm back at the village. What the? So the barn has the stats of the previous run. Awesome, you found Zoe, but Ekahan, isn't Ekahan with you too? Kree Kree, Echo Kree. Over there. Are you sure? You can track his tail from this far away, trail? The bond between you two will always impress me. If you want, ma'am, I could go and look for him while you keep guarding the village. Of course you can go, but be careful and get me some more wood. Okay, so we have 11 wood. Over here, there was our oh, watchtower, exclamation mark. Mathilda rebuilt the watchtower during your expedition. Here, you can pick relics to make your expedition easier. Or, on the contrary, choose other ones to make the game more difficult. You'll also find relics that allow you to make in-depth changes to the game to make it more accessible. Reveals the number of cards left to draw before finding the altar. So these are easy. These are hard. These are accessible. You are immune to all damage. You can exceed the maximum HP limit. Spending the night doesn't consume provisions. You can move to any card in danger zones. These relics re radically change the basic mechanic of the game. We recommend activating them only for accessibility reasons. Now, if we make these harder, do we get any benefit or reward? Or is it just like at some point we can try and do challenge runs or something? It seems we can just leave those be for now. There's the dark forest again. So we still have 11 wood if we don't need to do the tower. What should we fix first? We can do the tavern and the workshop. So at the tavern, choose who goes on expeditions. Tavern rebuilt. New feature unlocked. New characters. You can change your playable character at the tavern. All right, but we need to progress our story before we do that. Makes sense. We can upgrade the tavern over here. Interesting. And shall we do the workshop? Cartography workshop. Workshop rebuilt. Luck. Your character now has a luck stat and affinities. In the cartography workshop, you can unlock new zones to enrich your future expeditions. These zones can be unlocked using exploration points that you collect during your expedition. You currently have no exploration points. Go on an expedition, collect exploration points, and then come back here to unlock new zones. So, a zone with gold coins, a zone with spirits, a zone with luck, a zone with a gentile that will give an echo to your equipment. So we can basically unlock new rooms, which is fun. I'm totally here for it. God, there's so much game, and I'm so excited. Uh, we have two wood left. We could put it into something, but I assume we're not going to lose that wood over time. Let's just stick it in the forge. All right, so we're out of wood. Well, for the half hour mark, I think that is a good time to put the game down right now. But you can expect a full campaign of this. I'm having a great time. I'm excited to see all of the ins and outs of how things change over the course of the campaign. So as ever, if you want to check out the game for yourself, there is a link down in the description. Once again, thank you ever so much to the publisher for sending me a key to play the game. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, put them down below. Hit that like button, subscribe for more, and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers.